In a world with entirely too many shows about cars, this is another pointless automotive podcast. Oh, dramatic brother. <laughs> oh boy, Chadwick. How the hell are you, my friend? Pretty good. Putting some brother in my brother. Ooh, brother. <laughs> Oh brother. Um, oh, brother. Brother. <laughs> oh brother, we're out that art to that. Oh, is that gin? Yeah, of course it is. Perfect. Yeah. Bottom bottom shelf. Uh, um, it's not a beef eater, one of my favorites. Oh boy. Nice. Sometimes you just gotta eat the beef. Um oh, hello, uh listening <laughs> public. Uh welcome to another uh tantalizing and titillating ooh, episode of another pointless automotive podcast. You know that already. I'm Frank. We've got Chadwick. In the house, sipping Hello. on the eater of beef, and um, you just continue enjoying and, and listening along, dear listener. That's all you have to do. It, yeah, it's it's great. We we set a pretty low bar. If you haven't picked that up, a hundred and however many episodes in, um, in keeping with tradition, um, that's a terrible segue. I don't know, but you know what I do want to talk about today. Not not low bars, not beef eaters, not listening to us, um grudge matches we've done this in the past yes a few where uh, yeah yeah it's episodic even where mm. we'll, we'll we'll take uh, you know maybe this manufacturer versus that manufacturer and pit them up to one another in some sort of uh, virtual all-encompassing battle for the ages um and we've got some fun ones here and 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 i actually don't know what spurred this topic on i don't I, you you had mentioned this to me at one point and it was also just something i happened to be discussing with somebody recently which is automotive grudge match mitsubishi versus subaru oh fight this is steeped heavily in rivalry i think especially with in rally port of rally yes mm -hmm. uh, boy these two they were it was an arms race uh, when these guys were going at it and you know oh i'm excited to talk about this one frank this one's this one's fun this is boy the height of rally the the arrival of these all-wheel drive turbo rally machines in the states there's just so many good things to talk about on this one uh and this some one, yeah. genuinely some genuinely fisticuff throwdowns between these two automakers yeah it's it's an interesting one because there's so many different ways that this battle can take it i mean obviously there's the you know, as you said, the rally, the rally pedigree where they actually did duke it out for some time and, and yep. there were haymakers thrown in either direction. But just even like in the marketplace, I mean, I would say today there's a clear winner as of like who has held like put up stood up for that test of time. But you know, you look at these manufacturers in their heyday, in their earlier days, mm -hmm. um, and kind of the products they were putting out and and the mark that they've all, both each left kind of on the marketplace um, in the world of the automobile. I don't know. It's pretty cool. It, there's a lot of different angles that we can take here. Um, there are. Um, dude, I got a good one. I just want to start off with Frank. And I, please, and please. you and I both uh, are personally it. invested in this matchup. Uh, I always it. like to, I think the fun thing we do is we break these into little sub matches, like the fighter card usually ramps up to our final decision. And I Don't can't, I can't not mention this dude. Uh, rally pedigree with the all-wheel drive nature because both these cars were early adapter adopters of all-wheel drive technology obviously quattro we get it you mm -hmm. guys came first but man subaru and mitsubishi really built upon that system and put it in the hands of people that didn't want to drive an audi you know japanese cars uh really embraced this and they added their own takes with super ayc and all these other mm -hmm. asymmetrical all-wheel drive and limited yeah. slip diffs and all this fun stuff but dude let's take it back baby galant vr4 Versus the legacy, I believe it was called the Sport Turbo. It's it's really doesn't have right. a proper title, um, but it was the uh, 2.2 liter sealed deck uh, turbo that was sold here in the states in extremely low numbers. Obviously, the Galant VR4 also sold in extremely rare numbers. We, both of these were, I believe, rally homologated. You don't hear too much talk about the legacy, uh, and we're talking yeah. pre Impreza date, right? This is before Lancer. This is before Impreza. Who wins this fight and why, Frank? What do you got? Who's your, who's, your, um, who's on your fight card to win this? I mean, I think I I think anyone who's listened to more than forty seven seconds of this pod will probably <laughs> pro probably figure out who we're probably going to pick here. Because um, mm. I do think 
there's a reason why. I mean, both these cars for the non-car person are pretty obscure. Yeah, fair enough. Um, but, you know, the Legacy, they had the Sport, but I, I, did they make an RS that was maybe homologated? Maybe it was like, maybe we never got it, but that's what they used to hom- homologate it or no? We never got it. We got a wagon variant of the Sport Turbo. You could get right. that and extremely low numbers, extremely rare with a manual option, which yeah. is the one I would, I would, I'd be super after that car. You know, if I could score one of those, they are usually beaten within like negative five inches of their life. They're already yeah, dead. They're, they're uh, shrecked. Uh, they rotted out because they were driven in snow covered places. Uh, but that sealed deck two, too, is a is a pretty legendary engine for Subaru. That thing was nuts. Yes. Uh, yeah. The Thanks. power was low, though. 160 horsepower compared to the Glantz uh, VR4 195. So it's a fair discrepancy there to call out, right? Obviously, the no, rally for sure. are different. Um, and but I, yeah, and I don't remember if they did they make. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember if there was an, like an RS sedan. But at the end of the day, like it was. I mean, yeah, it was a homologation car. But I, I, I think first off, I think on the on the on the podium. I, I correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe the Galant was a was a, a much more winning platform than that Legacy was in that period. Yeah, you are correct. Um, the Galant was pretty monstrous and. Yeah, I mean, it was it was successful, and it and it really proved the concept to Mitsubishi that begat all the more famous stuff later. But mm-hmm. the I, I I I'm struggling to figure out a point to score for the legacy on this one. They're cool. It's the wagon. That's it's why I said the wagon bigger. gets. Yeah, point. it's got a wagon, but uh, Galant all day. It's the yeah, it's the Galant. It the Galant was more upscale. It was more mainstream, which, you know, in our parlance is, would generally be a negative, but like it was more in the mainstream in a lot of ways. It was the dimensions were better. Yep. Um, the layout was better. It had one of the greatest engines of the 90s and mm-hmm. into the mid 2000s and the 463. Um, plus, you know, it was when it came out, it was like, oh, we're going to do the homologation thing right and we're, yep. we're, we're going to make it a special thing and we're going to celebrate it and we're going to capitalize on what we're trying to do in the rally sphere yeah and, and it, so for that i i just i can't find a way to go against that car and i'm not going to sit here and say that Columbia vr4 is the greatest car of all time i'm partial to it you and i both are but yeah it's one of my um, definitely one of my favorites it's it's a rare uh japanese icon it looks great i think it looks the style is fantastic it has a numbered dash uh plate which is already points in our book uh yep. all-wheel drive it's just it's it's got all the goods man turbo 4 g steering yeah great great car great great car yeah so i i give it to the vr4 in this matchup my friend but yeah. i nod to that legacy i really do love those things and if i could secure a wagon manual and even if it needed a lot of work i'd still take that project on uh that'd be absolutely high on my list yeah um How's about Ooh. how about how about we go early to mid nineties flagship coupes? Okay, okay. I think I have this one on my list. Um, oh, okay. What you, I think you picked one that's only automatic but still cool. Yes, and the the way I want to put a spin on this is mm. because I think I think in a vacuum, you know, three thousand GT VR four versus an svx is a pretty unfair fight yeah yeah however if you were to go out right now today and find a nice clean svx or a nice clean (laughs) 3000 gt vr4 mission impossible over here no they're out they're actually i've seen them starting to come out of the woodwork a little bit now it's hard it's 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 hard, but still challenging. Like a very a very very nice driver, but very nice, perfectly running SVX is what eight. I'd say yeah, seventy five eight. Yeah, Absolutely. versus that in three thousand GT three thousand GT VR four guys is well, fifteen. I was gonna I was gonna put a ten. In front yeah, of yeah, a little more than that. So it's for... more than double. It probably yeah. more than double. Non modified, good running condition, up on maintenance. Yeah. It's gonna be twelve. Fully to functional. Five. Maybe yep. it's got maybe uh, twelve to ninety thousand miles into rock chips, but like yeah. runner. Twelve to fifteen for sure. Yeah. So effectively, let's just say double. Yeah. The SVX. 
I don't want to say do you want two SVXs or one three thousand GT, but <laughs> but what I'm saying is like adjusted adjusted for price. What's what's the winner there? Because I think in a yeah. vacuum the three thousand, or even if even if I just said just get the 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 non VR four. <sighs> Yeah, that's a difference. GT. That's a big difference because that's just now you're going to a front wheel drive. Uh, Same power and it's a manual versus the SVX. It's not. Yeah, but front wheel drive know. in that car. I don't know. Yeah. I think the special sauce is the twin. Uh, having owned a stealth twin turbo RT, uh, the, those cars motor so fast. It's like cool. this like They're weird. Just cool. it, it masks its speed. But both of those cars are impossibly cool because an SVX is. Like we talked about in the last episode, I believe the SVX is impossibly cool looking and they're getting better looking as they age. So I think side by side, those are two damn cool, like you said, sports coupes for sure from the same period. And I have that same matchup on my list. 100% I do. Uh, and I gave the win again, Mitsubishi, man. Just yeah. if the, I'm telling you, if that SVX came with a manual and maybe like maybe they made it like an not STI, but you know what I'm saying? Like an RS trim. Imagine if they would have made that back in the day with a little more power and like a manual. How fucking valuable would that car be today? I'm just it thinking would be a... of, I'd like to see someone, it, it's funny, you'll hear like, oh, if if, if somebody was going to mm. sing a rise of whatever, right? Like, like oh yeah, they're going to like, some yes, company is going to yes. go out and like buy a bunch of cars and like rebody them and like reimagine them and, and modernize them and make them. Sure. Like, I mean. <laughs> nobody would choose an svx but no like, think of the think of the potential with like <sighs> just the interest like the flat the flat six architecture um put a manual behind it like modern yes. modern bits and pieces lighten it up with like aluminum and carbon and i mean it's it's a fool's errand but if i won the um and i might i did buy a uh, a mega millions ticket this evening so i oh. might be a a, a a budding billionaire in which case watch watch the space <laughs> exactly yeah dude all of a sudden i just started like a, an svx only tuner shop but stock for stock the galant interior is much nicer than the svx i don't know if you've sat in i'm an sorry SVX. you mean you mean you mean 3000 gt so, 3000 gt yeah. vr4 yeah is a way better interior than that it's it's way cooler looking it has the cool hvac system i think yeah, the materials yeah. are a touch above those svx interiors tended to just disintegrate like the seats especially uh yeah. but they were just like a non like exciting except for the cool windows you can see from the inside the rest of the interior was boring Subaru I would say yeah uh, it whereas was... the, the 3000 GT was totally a cockpit when you sit inside a 3000 GT or a Dodge Stealth you really sit in the car it's, it's a cool freaking feeling but yeah that HVAC unit that shows the air moving in the right colors whether it's red or blue is I, I love shit like that dude I love that you know me I like that kind of stuff that you know we we we, we often talk about you know, eras of cars, right? So you had like the muscle car era and then, you know, the malaise era. And, and, you know, we, we, you know, we'll talk about like, mm. like the Godzilla era of, you know, nineties yeah. Japanese cars and, and, and sport sports GT cars specifically. Right. And really mostly everyone just talks about Supra, NSX. 300ZX, NSX, FDR X7, 3000 GT to a lesser extent, but that, yeah, that's mentioned in the that. conversation. That's kind of it. Maybe sometimes something like a, like a type R will sneak in, sneak in there, mm -hmm. but that's late in the run. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe something like, you know, I, I don't say Miata fits in there, but because it doesn't, yeah, but that's more lightweight sporty, but yeah, no, yeah, I agree. But, but there's so much of even stuff that we didn't get, but just in skyline, I suppose. Right. But like there's that era of like, Japanese economic boom madness that produced stuff like, hey, super, we're Subaru. We have like the loyal wagon. And then we're going to have Jaro come in and design the SVX and just throw money at this yeah. thing because we're Japanese in the late 80s and we have more money than we can ever spend. And economic so they just, bubble, baby. yeah, like really, really cool stuff came out of there in, in, in like, uh, yeah, soar aero cabins that we never got and just who, all that stuff is cool. Who do you give it to, Frank, in this case? I mean, it's it's gotta be VR even adjusted for, again. for for price. Agree. Mitsubishi again. Yeah. I think the SVX a, a cool like manual variant with a little more power would have been neat, but uh, both impossibly cool. Uh I do have another sports coupe matchup for you from the nineties. 
We can go earlier 90s with this one if you'd like. Uh, no, this one will be mid or mid to late-ish. Now, these are going to be sports coupes, uh, all-wheel drive, too. Not all turbo. We're talking about DSMs versus the Impreza RS. Who did it better? <sighs> oh, this is a good one. This, this one's, good. This this one's actually one. surprisingly tough because on paper, yeah. right, if you're just reading spec sheets, you're like, oh, well, this is dumb. Like, DSM. I'm, going, I'm going DSM, but... Yeah. If you were to ask, what's well, Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi? So let's just stick with the Eclipse. Sure, fair. Verify it. Fair. fair. We'll go. We'll GSX. Go we'll go with no, GSX. No talent. No talent to be had here. Um, <laughs> none of that. If, if you were, either. if you were to ask me, in period, mm -hmm. as a as a say a freshman in high school, say it's 1998, 97, 98. This guy's picking second gen Eclipse all day, guys. No, get out. I was anti DSM then. I was like. I was like, oh, give me the give me the two five RS. That thing's cool. What? It's um <laughs> Mitsubishi is unreliable. Again, this is inferior. Right? Mitsubishi is unreliable. Sure. It's a bucket of bolts. It's gonna walk the crank out of the block. And um, you know, it's like it was, seven at the time it was like it was like the fuckboy special. Like it was just boost to the moon. You go to you remember go you find some like angel fire website that would tell you how to make a manual boost controller for like $17 with Home Depot parts. Was it GeoCities? Um, Is it GeoCities or Angel Fire? Uh, yeah, GeoCities or Angel Fire. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever, whatever the first result on Alta Vista was. Yeah. Um, and it would it would get you there. Um, and yeah, it was. I was I was pretty uh, I was pretty hardcore, not DSM. Mm. Like I just it was like it was it was the fuckboy car. It was like yeah. that and like yeah. five O Mustangs were like yeah those are lame like. Meh, meh, meh. In retrospect, they were cool. They were cool. And they were not as unreliable as we all thought because they did get the Home Depot $17 manual boost controller into the grave. And if you just do the maintenance, right, like you actually change the timing belt and, and balance belt on time, balance shaft belt on time, they, they actually are okay. And the good reliable flat four Subarus turns out they were just like nuking head gaskets every 50,000 miles. Yep. Um, and, and yeah, so I do love a good clean two door two, five RS. Oh, hell yeah. You, they, they all day cars that are unobtainable. Talk about that. I, I think yeah, I'm probably no. more likely to see a clean eclipse GSX than I am. A even clean stock two five both, RS. Both of these both are dude, hard. Finding stock versions of either one of these, let's be brutally honest, whether it be a first gen or second gen DSM uh, or a clean, you know, GC8 uh, Impreza or the four door ones. I like the Impreza for RS4 four, four door ones. I think they yeah. look pretty sharp too. Uh, and I am a sucker for four doors, but Old rims. impossible, impossible to find both of those clean now yeah. without. And then people, when they do have a cleanish one, astronomical prices. Oh, like, yeah. Dude, Dude, a even clean like, 25S, it's like, I want 22.5. You're like, what? It's not even STI. You go buy an STI. Yeah, yeah so like, exactly. Cool. However, yeah, uh, it's... Doesn't make sense. Uh, same with DSMs now. Like, there's people selling, like, a really clean, like, Eclipse GS. Fine. Still has all the looks, none of the performance. And they still want, yeah. like, eight or nine. And I'm like, what? in what world is that worth yeah, that money? It's like a $3,500 car. Yeah, if that. It's like, there's no upgrade path. Um, yeah, but no. No, there's not. But both I of just, those, man, both of those are impossible to pull out of the ether right now for clean. And if you are, you're probably going to over be paying overpriced unless it's something that's sat in someone's garage for a long time. But every one of those DSMs, dude, look even the stock looking ones on the outside, it shows the engine bay, giant intercooler piping, aftermarket oh, yeah. math. Everything's mm -hmm. like big turbo. It's like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, no. I don't need this. 12, yeah, ridiculous, 1200 CC like, injectors every time. Like a three gallon oil catch can because it's yeah. just like blowing everything past the rings. And you're just like, oh man. <laughs> the oil um, caps hovering when it's idling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, That's normal, man. I, this one's really, this one's surprisingly tough for me because I just, I don't know. I think I, I, I hate to give another one to Mitsubishi. I think I'm going to, but it's, it's, it's like 1A, 1B because I really do like a good, clean stock 2.5 RS. I do, I do too. They're I not do. as good of a car, though. 
Right. And we felt, I think the period sentiment too, was we were shunned. We weren't given the full until we got that WRX. We were given like the half ass treatment. It's kind of like the uh, Focus SVT, which is a really cool car, but we Mm -hmm. never got the full Focus ST and RS that Europe had for so long. It was kind of like, Hey, keep the Americans happy, play what, give them some played down bullshit. Uh, And I think that's the same thing. And I think we look back at it now, the GC8, like the Impreza RS is looking good. So look, it's a good looking car and we're starting to respect it for what it is. Good platform. You know, if you want mm-hmm. to keep it stock, I would keep it stock or you swap it to an RSTI. Those are super popular, but I think it's like a focus SVT dude. Uh, we never got the full spice. We got like a little bit of black pepper on there and they said, you know, help yourself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Would so you, I think, DSM. I think I'm going DSM. You um, got to like whether in, in a stock second gen eclipse, like GSX or GST still looks so good. It's such a good looking car. They look great. And the first yeah, gen. No, they do. I, the first do. gen still look great too. But that second gen is just like, it's just wild. It's a wild design when you really step back and look at yeah. it. It's a spaceship, man. Yeah. No, they're, they're very cool. And, and, and what's tough for me is I'm, tr- I've, as we're discussing this, I'm struggling to come up with the next matchup mm. because. The bug eye WRX mm. versus what? Nothing. Like that's that's the problem. And that's how that's how important out of all the cars that we're we're talking, and we just gave three points in a row to Mitsubishi. I don't know that there's a more important they, car to discuss than that bug eye WRX. Did because they didn't do like a rally art, like a play down, like a, a dial no. down evil until like the 10. I don't think we got like a rally. Right. Arc. And even then it was, yeah, it was what a rally. Arc. It was I don't pretty... think there was anything. The Evo came no. out in 03, the Evo 8 in the States, but that was above. That was, that would murder. Yeah. That was, that was a, that was a little bit of a different thing. That was the STI, which God then came damn, out. Damn, man. What? So there was that, that was like a, it was the O2 WRX, which launched in almost mid 01. Like it was mm-hmm. an early. So my my 2002 WRX had a I remember had a build date of April of 01, which is early wow. for an 02. Um, uh, it was a very it was a very early sedan. Third gen Eclipse GT. <laughs> yeah, I don't right? know, man. I got nothing. But There's then the nothing. very next year, then but then then that was it. Then 03, like I think it was a late 03 offering was the the Evo 8. Yeah. Right. And then STI 04. And then STI the next year in 04. So but like the stage that put that and there and there was a, a a pretty significant price delta between say an 03 WRX and an 03 Evo. It's huge, yeah, huge. Like t- um, ten thousand plus, yeah. Yeah, and, and it was warranted. But For that sure. that that bug eye WRX that came oh. out at what? It was like twenty grand or twenty one. Just over twenty, yeah. It was like it undercut like a, a, a fully loaded GTI, which was insane. <laughs> And 227 mm. horsepower, manual. You got, uh, you got what, like an SCCA like driver course included yes. kind of card, membership card, and some just... of them came with a boost gauge. They came with a there, yeah, uh, only Momo a handful steering of steering wheel. Right? Just they cool. all came with the Momo steering wheel, the bucket seats, um, fog lights that were bigger than most cars' headlights. I re- that was such a that was really such a mm. car. They look good, and still. I, I. I'm like moderately emotionally attached to mine. Mine was secondhand. I bought it from the second owner, who's a buddy of mine. And I got what? it when... You had a sedan, right? Yeah, it's a 2002 sedan, silver. Um, I, I ended a, up... I also putting... had a silver. Yeah. Oh, two wagon, yeah. though. I had a wagon. Yeah. Yeah, wagons. That's pretty cool. Wagons are cool. The sedans are still very cool, too. Like, Both. I'm always yeah. team wagon. You know, the sedans, you got the flared fenders... That, yep. that you didn't get with the wagon but that sedan functionality was through the roof it was nice it was such it was just a good car i i bought mine it had i want to say like eighty three thousand miles on it when i bought mm. it bought it from a buddy of mine who bought it it was like a one-year-old car when he bought it yeah um, that's a... he, so he bought it with like eighteen thousand miles on it or something it was like a and you kept and a it old. for a while too yeah, I sold it with one. I think I had like 158 on it when I sold it. I put a boat. I only had it like three years, but I just put enormous miles on it. They were good to um, drive. 
the only thing I did on it was it had did yours well where did you live when you had yours California okay did you ever take it to Tahoe uh no I took my legacy spec I don't think I took okay. the X. yeah so those I know it was 2002 and maybe 2003 they had a recall that they would only perform if you lived in a specific cold climate state where there was some, I don't know how it, there was some fuel line fitting in the engine bay that would shrink up. And then when you would run the HVAC system, it would just blast straight fumes into the cabin. Which is, that's one of my good buddies back in Maine when I was living there, bought one right when it came out and he ran it. I mean, Maine's winter 60% yeah. of the year and he never yes. had an issue. That's interesting. I never even Mine definitely it. did that. And it was like, I took it, like I took it to Tahoe and like started it up and like put the defroster on and like freeze off, like, cause it was just frozen. And it was like eye watering. Like you couldn't, you, you couldn't function in the car. And so, and, and, and sure enough, there was a, but they wouldn't, they would, they fought me on the recall. They're like, no, it, California doesn't qualify. It doesn't get cold enough here. It was like, have you been to Tahoe? It gets cold enough. <laughs> and I had, to, I had to fight them on it. And they eventually were like, okay. And they did the recall and it fixed it. Um, Boy, that so wasn't I did a, that. That wasn't a fair matchup, Frank. You gave, you gave. Uh, versus, Subaru, Subaru versus, versus nothing. Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just, that's a, a truly special car. I'm still kind of surprised Great that they're not out. worth more than they are. Mm. Um, considering that's another car, all of these cars, everyone we're going to talk about today, other than Special, like SCX, yeah. have been modified into the grave and you can't find them stock or clean anymore. I got a little different flavor for you. If you want to try something got? different, what you got? I Best crossover SUV Ooh. in this matchup. This is an interesting one. We have the Outlander versus womp, the Forester. I, I, is this a competition, Frank? Because I don't know. The Outlander's still no, doing not. things. The Outlander's still doing things. I think it's doing yeah, all it's the Mitsubishi support. things. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is all of Mitsubishi. <laughs> Where they have the um, what's the uh, that, 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 not the, the Eclipse what's Cross? The, um... <laughs> yes, thank you. God. Outlander, the Eclipse Cross, and the the Ghost, the the Mirage of a Mirage. Um, yeah. I mean, Forster, and it's yeah. kind of not a contest. I mean, the the second gen Forster XT Oof. is one yeah. of the most interesting should be celebrated more cars but isn't huge ever. cult following actually huge cult yeah. following on that one i agree i think what they do fetch a premium i had that really nice one do you remember that one i restored oh yeah uh that one went to a loving home and what a fantastic vehicle uh that was completely bone stock which you can it's Good. that's tricky not to find one lowered down and it, that ruins it to me because i think that thing was subaru's like honestly and i think i yeah. said the review about that was subaru's swiss army knife because it was Absolutely. a vehicle uh, it had fun performance. It had a cool turbo 2.5 engine. It had all-wheel drive, enough ground clearance to get in a little bit of trouble. And it was built like ruggedly. Like the interior was just made of materials that just didn't age. Like those interiors cannot be damaged. And they look so cool with the giant fog lights, the big hood scoop. It just, it's such a cool, like weird bread box shaped yeah. crossover. It's just, I love that thing. I think those things are so cool. You know, no, often I reflect, I'm like, I should have kept it. And I had a five-speed manual, which is ultra rare in those. It's so hard yeah, to track. Those are, those are really, really cool. I, I just, I, that's, that's one of the, I, it, when you think about it, it's really one of the most unique offerings ever. Like, I, I can't think of like an upright boxy SUV wagon combo with detuned STI powertrain. Right. Five-speed manual. Um, you know, hood scoop, just the, the practicality through the is 30 miles a gallon from being the greatest vehicle ever made. And, and even then they're not terrible. They're not, vehicles. you're getting 20, probably low twenties, but they're reasonably reliable. They don't chow down head gaskets like the NA cars. Nope. I think I had um, around 200 K on mine. Yeah, no, they're, um, they're really unique. And I don't know that there was anything before it or since that you can just get i mean dude the, two the generation sun... after that auto only yeah two sunglass holders pretty Ooh. cool yeah and the generation big, big sunroof on those cars big sunroof too really cool yeah. car just a really mm -hmm. cool car outlander now i've done some fun research <laughs> yeah. and gone back yeah. you ever look at the early the original outlander yeah it was it's it kind of weird and cool looking yeah the front it's, grill. it's almost more wagon yeah it is it's totally i think it is like that was trying to be a Forester for Mitsubishi. It was like right? a cross between the first gen Forester and like 
WRX wagon style. Yeah. It looks yeah. cool. Like I saw one, I'm like, that's quite arresting. Like in the design department now, when you see one, especially in like a bright color, like a red or an orange, you're like, that's kind of neat. Like I so, think that's a cool. So Evo thing. Evo powertrain swap. Yeah, they. I think they called that the the Evo Lander. A few people did that, which was pretty oh, cool. Sick. Yeah, <laughs> kind of cool. I'm in support of that. Yeah, totally. Um, if we had a spicy variant, that would be cool. Uh, but in this case, Forester, especially the XT, yeah. all day. Yeah. No contest. Great platform. And it's just such a good package. Like you said, it it's unique looking. It's really interesting looking to look at as a vehicle, but also like completely through the roof functionality. Just so good. Yeah. So many things Could to be. so many people. Have you been burying the lead this whole time? Have I? What happened? Like the the real the real deal, Holyfield matchup. <laughs> the the big the big guns. Unless you, you have been... anything. I think I, mean, I, I could... think we're saving that one. That's gonna Are be it. I think we end on I that. I haven't been I haven't been staring at the clock, so I don't know what else I we want to we're... talk about unless we want to go Subaru Brat versus uh, uh... I don't even know. Dodge Colt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it could go the uh, a weird matchup, but <laughs> let's just do it. Are we doing it? I think we should just do it, man. Evo STI. That's, that's God, this it. is tough. This is the toughest one, my friend. I think we we've argued this point back and forth, and I think we both have flip flopped camps like five times. Uh, yeah, no loser. There's no loser in this competition. There, um. I might call it a draw. That's how much I care about both it, of these cars, Frank. I don't think I can pick one now. I don't think I can. It's tough. Uh, you know, and I think if, again, back to back to 2.5 RS uh, blah, DSM lore. Yeah. Where I had a different opinion then than I do now. Very similar, I think, if you were to ask me in, say, 2007. Okay. 2008 i would have unequivocally answered sti sure um i still really like those cars mm. although now i'm older so now i'm like oh, i don't know if i'd like daily one could just kick the shit out of me i mean they're very very firm yeah um good seats though the O5 or good four seats. five seats are very nice. They still look cool. You Don't can get the, you can get the cool. STI limited guys, uh -huh. which I feel like everyone I see is gray because they were like half that of them were gun gray metal. and half of them yeah. were pearl white. And I would be a pearl white stand on those. Okay. Um, but mm. in retrospect, I think if it's like that or Evo 8, Evo 9, really, especially Evo 9. I I would want to drive them back to back, but I I, I really uh, it, it's like this. It's like my heart says STI because I liked them more in mm -hmm. period. So I've got this like I've got this emotional connection to like wanting sure. one and potentially owning one. That's fair. But those Evos are like they've aged so well, so good. The they, nine, especially the nine, more so than the eight for sure. Yeah, they're just. Yeah, here's, chef's kiss. Here's what here's what I do, man. I mean, I can't make Heroin? a decision. So I go oh. 05, World Rally Blue, Gold Rims, STI, can't lose, fully stock. God damn, they look perfect. The proportions, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Keep it all the same. The big hood scoop, the big wing, I love it. Park it next to an 09 or 09 or an Evo 9 in yellow. For some reason, I want an Evo in yellow and that World Rally Blue park next to each other. What a cool garage. Like that's just... It's what what's it's win win whatever one you choose to drive that day. I, the Evo comes with a five speed if you don't get the MR, which right. is like the only like performance difference. The good SDI, news. get the <laughs> MR. <laughs> right, the MR doesn't like to be tuned as much as the regular one, but whatever, guys. You know whatever they say. I guess that six speed wasn't as robust. The STI six speed though is a fantastic like transmission yeah. though. That's a great yeah. train training to not blow. Um, and I like to blow trainees. Um, That's true. Take that as you will. Uh, but I, I'm torn. I literally can't pick a winner. Cause I love, I would, I love both those cars equally. I think the Evo is probably the Jesus you find either one stock as a challenge. Let's be brutally honest. Uh, the Evo uh, commands a more premium price, but uh, yeah, it's tough. It's a real tough. I pick both. I can't. What's interesting winner. is I can't, I almost wonder if part of me Part of me is aged into liking the Evo more 
Mm. Not so much that because it's like my I've like eight like the cars have aged differently or my opinion has changed. Or if it's just like I have this subconscious effort to not be like STI fuckboy. Oh, they're so good though. No, they are, but like I maybe part of it is like me subconsciously thinking like which fan base do I want to be a part of? Which is silly. And I I it would be purely like subliminal, but I because I don't I don't really care. Yeah, dude. You get I wouldn't that. I wouldn't be hanging out with any of these people anyways, honestly. You gotta right? brush that, that shit fine. aside and you're not gonna like deep dish stance at wxsti right like the modern people do and vape the shit no. out of it you're gonna no. have in a fucking katana blade shift knob you're gonna have <laughs> like a stock one like me like a stock whenever i like see a stock Philly. like world Philly. rally blue 05 sti roll by it's like i turn my head every time because they still look so good with the gold bbs's you can't OG lose or limited uh og Did you do it og 100 percent I, I, I want the spoiler and big hood scoop. I want the see. I, I, the, the one problem I had, I like the hood scoop. I, I was never a big fan of the spoiler. Love it from the side profile. It looks just like a rally car. I, I, that's all I'm there for. That car is a rally car built for the street, you know, or rally. Um, but it's just, it's just so good. It's so good. Arresting too to watch. I'm just like, I stare at him. And then you never see, when's the last time you saw a stock Evo 8 just cruising? Never. Mm, boy. Not in the past um, five, 10 years. Minute. Yeah, it's been, been a while. Yeah, there's um, it's hard to lose. But what's what's wild is for for a while I felt like the Subarus commanded more money. Not anymore. Not now. Certainly not now. I the the pendulum has really swung the other way where the you're, Evos are pulling big money. You're still paying twenty k for a sorted STI that's stock. You're still you can find a fifteen. Yeah, but you're paying you're, with- you're paying almost forty. If that's an Evo. Correct. Yeah. But the STI is that at one point you can get them for a 10, 12. Now it's like 20 for a sorted stock one with 160,000 miles. No shit. Um, but it, they, they made more STIs, I think is actually part of that answer. And I think they produced more, but yeah. Yellow Evo 8 would probably be great though. That would be great. That would do it for me. That would, Damn. yeah, that would, that would do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm serious. I would, I would want to see, you know, what would be like, I mean, it'd be terrible torture porn, um, which I know you enjoy. I but do. If somebody wanted to make some sort of like YouTube, like hundreds of dollars on YouTube, um, I would want to see. I would want to see like uh, somebody getting like an Evo Nine and an STI and doing a straight up tug of war, like on oh, top, like, put them on the same tires. I'm saying it'd be torture porn. How hasn't Top Gear done that yet? But I, I you know, you go back bottom to gear. Top Gear, power, power watch- bottom gear. Go watch like Top Gear, uh, like the Evo. It's it's the eight versus the STI. I love those videos, dude, because those cars and they were like throwing a Lambo and hose the Lambo around a track with both those cars. It's just uh, I can't pick, dude. That that you know what honestly. I've been what's that? Some of the best, the old best motoring stuff. I love those videos. I so have cool. I have a few of the DVDs. One of my favorites, like Life Above Ten Thousand RPMs. It's the Battle of VTEC. And yeah. it's just like all type R's and like mm-hmm. the Civic and Integra's. It's so good, yeah, dude. Ours, yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. But uh, no, I just, I think I'm skewing. I think I'm going to go Evo. Okay. But I might have a different answer tomorrow. It, that's it. And I think, I, I think it's, it's my heart. My heart says STI, mm-hmm. but like my brain says Evo. The thing is, I'll always have a Galant VR4, which is like really 90% of an Evo, to be brutally honest, especially those early ones that only had like 270 horsepower. Um, I know it's different. I know it's lighter. I know it's cooler. I still love them, impossibly. But I think I'd get, right now, I'd probably go for that World Rally Blue 05 STI. Yeah. I think I would. I just love them. I love the way they sound. They look great. The gauge cluster is cool. I mean, I it's been, it's it's been so long since I've been in either of those cars clean and stock. I like the interior way more on the STI, the blue carpeting, blue seats. Yeah, I think that I think the build quality was a little better. Definitely was. What, Definitely did they was. hold up better? I don't know. They held up really good. Yeah, the seats held up pretty good. The carpet held up good. The uh, you could get the Recaros with the Evos, and that was probably it. The rest was regular Lancer affair inside. Right. So, sure. You know, I think it's funny, like. Almost- like like the WRX, I remember that was always the the rub. It was like, oh, the interiors are garbage. 
Yeah, but it the was, WRX was fine, but it wasn't that bad, for, especially S- for what you got, you know? The Lancer and STI were like at the same price point, right? So, I mean, comparable, I think the STI had the better interior, even though it was WRX, but the, the effort they put into the seats and carpeting made it that much yeah. different. Really yeah. liked it. Yeah. The blue. Man. <sighs> ah, it's tough. Good. Well, how about, good and, and here's, here's the thing though, is no matter what, who we declare a winner here and i wasn't really exactly keeping score i think it was damn near a sweet split decision uh, it was kind of a sweep for mitsubishi for us actually i was tallying kind of I except you said but wrx I, versus you nobody did, you entered wrx <laughs> against nobody which is like a ballot where no one runs where right. they run like uncontested well, forrester and forrester won right so forrester, forrester won, won that one we had uh the gallant one we split on the end so it was yeah. one point towards Mitsubishi, I think. Three thousand right? GT VR four one over the yep. SVX. The DSMs yep. beat the R- Impreza RS. Yeah. So three to two point five, depending on if you, you take your Subaru or we take my Mitsubishi on the the Grand. It's pretty Poo-Bah. close. Yeah, pretty it's, close. Yeah, it, it's pretty close. A little except Mitsu. except for this those companies' standings today. Oh boy, because I think Not the market close. the Not market has close. spoken. And really, probably the management of the companies have spoken because mm. there was a healthy amount of Mitsubishi mismanagement there, to the point where they're now mostly have been absorbed by another poorly managed brand in, in Nissan. So, um, you know, yeah. we can we can we can score it any way we want, but the the, the market, the free hand that has constantly touchingly touching me inappropriately, has decided that uh, that Subaru has has won we- today. Do you want to do a draw for the first time ever in our automotive grudge match? Mitsubishi versus Evo? Draw. I don't think it's close. Pickup trucks. Go. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's that close. Sandbar? I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. K vans from the 90s. Um, yeah, I mean it's 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 nearly draw. I think if if we stick to our guns and we say Mitsubishi. It's a half point t- towards Mitsubishi based on our, our scorecard. Super our closest. Yeah. Our close the copy of the match. copy of box numbers. Yeah. yeah. So um yeah, I don't know. Um good match. Maybe we can maybe we can do a rematch one day when once they come out with new products that will titillate. Oh, probably can't not. wait for Mitsubishi's 2024, 2025 lineups. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's gonna be Cheers. yeah, salute. <laughs> uh, so let's uh let's move forward to a little thing we like to call mm-hmm. the automotive Love. print game. Oh, it's yeah, wonderfully yeah. named, aptly named. Uh mm-hmm. Frank, I believe you have an ad to pull up for me. Some kind of I do. I do. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this up. You give uh, give the the people what they want, which is the definition of what we're doing. Mm. And I'll pull so, it on up. The name of the game is exactly what it is. So Frank is gonna pull up a magazine print ad from the 80s, 90s, early 2000s. He's gonna read it to me, omitting anything that gives away the particular make or model. Uh, I'm very bad at that. I think I've done it like two or three times so far, Uh, but he's gonna do that. I get three guesses to figure out what the hell he's mumbling about, usually some kind of weird vehicle. Uh, Every time I fail, I do get a lifeline in a sense that I can ask for a hint or clarifying points. 10 minutes are on the clock, so we can't drive on forever. I think our early episodes had 20 minute matches of this. Me and Frank going on and off for like 20 minutes. Uh, Some real fucking quality content. Go check it out. Uh, That's a plug for our early episodes. (laughs) But uh, that's pretty much the gist of it, guys. It's uh, pretty fun. I'm going to close my laptop and the, uh, the fair, the fairness is up and Frank, Yes. I'm ready for that beautiful bean oh, footage. Roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> Every time. I need a lap yeah. and hear me. Um, didn't that dog die? Anyways. Yeah, that, um, every dog dies eventually. Yeah, that's true. That's how it all ends. Um, so this is a one-page advertisement. Okay. Uh, we have at the very bottom, we've got a uh, uh, the front the front driver's side quarter shot of the car. Mm. It's dimly lit. The headlights are on, but they're not that bright, which is, I don't know what they did, but that's just the way it is. Weird. And that's at the top. There are two, there's two gauges. One of them is the fuel, like a fuel gauge okay. with the arrow on full. And another one is a stopwatch. Okay. It then says, introducing an economy car that isn't afraid to be measured by both. The gate, the stopwatch, and the fuel gauge, and it's fast and boat, right? fuel mm-hmm. economy. Uh, uh, allegedly, and then there's text. 
Until now, everyone knew what to call a car that got 32 miles per gallon on the highway and cost under $10,000. They called them economy cars. But test drive our new blank, and you might find that phrase slightly inadequate. Because under the hood is a remarkable new twin cam 16 valve fuel injected engine that delivers 125 horsepower, redlines at a stratospheric 7,800 RPM, and rockets the blank from zero to 60 in just 8.1 seconds. All while, quote, sounding like a Cosworth racing engine, end quote, according to Road and Track. But it doesn't just sound like a racing car. Its suspension system was refined by the same engineers at Lotus that create Formula One racing machines, resulting in a car that corners at 0.79G on the skid pad, just like the Porsche 944. Get back to what to call it? We'd like to suggest, quote, sizzling sports coupe. Should have stuck with but, that. But, yeah, it's introducing the sizzling sports coupe. <laughs> That'd be fucking sweet. <laughs> but we have to admit, it wasn't our idea. It was road and tracks. Mm. That's the ad, my friend. Oh, boy. Um, so, coop, two-door. Uh, what was the horsepower number again? Was it 160? 125. I'm sorry, 125. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 125. They, Stratospheric. Yeah, they didn't give... 7,800. The, they didn't. RPM. That's a high RPM, for sure. Um, they didn't give a displacement. It just said dual overhead cam, 16 valve. 16 valve. Yeah, so there's math involved. Sizzling. Sports coupe. Didn't say front wheel drive or rear wheel drive. I don't it believe I saw did that. not. I don't think I saw that. Um, that acceleration was really good. Sure. Yeah. Is that a 6-1, 0 to 60? 8-1. Eight, 8-1. One. Eight, one. My bad. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought you said 6-1, and I was like, that's kind of good. I mean, eight, <laughs> For 125 one. horsepower. For 125, that's really, 8-1 is really good, though. You know, Miatas were in the, like, close to 10 with 116 horsepower. So that's pretty yeah. fucking fast, actually. Doesn't sound like a heavyweight. 7,800. Boy, it's a rever. Uh, and it has some Lotus mentioning in there? Yeah, it was specifically, it says, hold on, I tabbed away because I'm an idiot. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Its suspension system was refined by the same engineers as Lotus that create Formula One racing machines. This is tricky. Uh, it's It would have mentioned a turbo if it was turbocharged. I'm assuming this is a naturally... It didn't say turbo. I didn't, I didn't miss turbo. It did not say turbo. Okay. So this is probably a naturally aspirated... You know, I'm going to take a shot. Eh, this is tricky. It could be a couple cars, but it's a coupe. Uh, let's go... Oh. I think this is going to be a, uh, we'll just go for it. First guess. Uh, this is going to be an Isuzu Impulse, my friend. Ooh. Um, excellent guess. Mm -hmm. It is not correct. Damnable. Um, it's too many revs. Too many revs for that. Too, I, I think you're right. I think it's too many revs. Although I think that Isuzu was at least Impulse. seven. At least seven on the Impulse, yeah. Um. As a hint, I'm going to give you the I, I, what I'm going to do is I'll give you the tagline for this manufacturer. It's a big hint if you know it. <laughs> if, if you, you don't, don't, it's shit. <laughs> if you don't, and and you know the manufacturers change their little their little saying and their tagline all the, all the time. All the time. Mitsubishi's had twenty. Yeah, yeah. This one is the first car builders of Japan. Wow. 125. Which I feel like is a healthy hint, even if you don't, like, it tells you that's country of origin. Presumably, right? Like, I, I don't know. I feel, imperialism. Like, I feel like this is, like, too obscure to be, like, a Toyota or a Honda. I feel, I feel like we're Suzuki-ish for some reason. Mm -hmm. I want to say... Is this a hot hatch, Frank? Is this are we talking hot hatchy? I'm getting a hot hatchy vibe from this. Um, is this a Suzuki Swift would have been a GTI and they later got 
threatened by Volkswagen and switch it to a Suzuki Swift GT. Is that what we're talking about today? It is not. God damn it. What we are talking about today. Um, mm. How about I give you this? You've named the manufacturer correctly in one of your two guesses. Mm. I don't think it's a Suzu. <laughs> That's not a big hint. <laughs> uh, if I do, no, I don't know who I'd stick with with Suzuki. I don't. Its suspension system was refined by the same engineers at Lotus that create Formula One racing machines. Yeah, the, the tuning by or suspension by Lotus was on the impulse, right? We already named that guy. Yep, it's not the uh, impulse. 25. Is this maybe older? Is this an older Isuzu? It can't be a Suzu. Oh, let me think for a second here. How much time? I got plenty of time. I'm you got time. Yeah, you got I'm like shooting. seven minutes. I'm throwing ropes all over the place here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, <laughs> over my shoulder, over my other yeah. shoulder. It's it's by the hours, guy. It's by the hour. You got some time. Um, I want to, but then like Suzuki, I can't think of anything else we got in the States that was like 7,800 RPMs, pretty, pretty up there. Mm-hmm. Nothing a Suzu rev like that though, and it's a car that was sold in the states. Good Costs name. under ten thousand dollars. What rev that much? I can't. I'm blanking here. That that last hint didn't help me too much. Sorry. <laughs> I, I I'm like I, it's still Suzuki or <laughs> Suzu in my head. Um, you were like, yes, <laughs> both of your wrong answers. It's one of those. <laughs> um, how wrong were you? I don't, that's such a high, I want to say it's like something with a four AGE and then tuned by Lotus suspension. And then I'm like, but what fell into that camp? I don't, I don't think... know. I don't know of a single Suzuki or Isuzu that has a four AGE. That's what I'm saying, but that that output doesn't that sound like a four AGE like yeah they grab I think to like seventy eight or something like yeah that. most of them were like one fifteen horse mm-hmm. but yeah it's got that out kicked by ten twenty five yeah yeah um dude I don't why am I blanking this seems like a car I would know. Uh, what did you give this on the spicy index? Was this like a solid eight? Ooh, um, yeah, it's like what I will never be, which is a hard eight. Hmm. Um, God, dude, this is a Suzu or Suzuki. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> like I know the older Suzu, like they had the Piazza, but that would be that wouldn't rev that high, right? And we got that as the impulse. Correct, which was the, but I'm talking like that would be the first gen where I was thinking of the naturally aspirated second gen, um, which was the same as the stylus, but with two fewer doors. Right. Um, but then we look at like Suzuki. I, yeah, I don't know. What did we have? What else did Suzuki have? What did Suzuki have in the States? Did they have, we had more Suzuki cars that actually revved? Ooh. Did we? Um, The Kazashi, but that was way, that was not under ten grand. That was way later. <laughs> the Aereo. Who knows what that ran to? Yeah, the Aereo. That didn't Aereo run anywhere SX. close to that. I like the Aereo SX, by the way. Um, am I missing like an obvious? Uh, Suzuki? I don't think I am. I'm stuck here. Suzuki's like I want to say Suzuki because the motorcycle nature of the company with high revving, but I can't think of another. I know there was plenty of like, like I'm thinking Alto Works or something like insane, like a you know. I'm, go- I'm thinking of K cars and shit, Frank. This is horrible. I know, but no, we, um, didn't, we didn't get those. Well, we didn't. Boy, that's a lot of revs. Anything from the ad you can reread to emphasize something. I'm trying, that's what I'm trying to look through. Uh, ba, 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 ba. No displacement, 16. Um, ba- uh, it's got to be a, yeah, at least get four cylinders. So fucked up with it, Swift, I guess. It names, it names the, I mean, I'll give you the, should I give you the trim level? Oh, we haven't done this car, have we? Are you sure? 
I don't think we have. You know, I blocked one out because I think we've done this car. What is it? Is this going to be an iMark RS? Yes. Oh, we've done it, Frank. We've done we've it. We've done it? Yes. I thought we That's did the why turbo. I didn't say it. I thought yeah, we, we did the turbo. I think we did. We did the iMark RS. God ah. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, at Hold least on. I'm like 98% sure we have. I intentionally okay. avoided I just, it. I just sent you the ad so you can you can check it out. You're going to make me look at our, our uh, history here. Well, I got it. You did get it. I you who's get avoiding it. that one. Isuzu iMark I RS. Mark RS. Which is a hell of a car. It's dude, impossibly cool. Uh they always I always pictured them in the white with the red like trim accents and stuff. God mm-hmm. damn cool looking little yeah, hatchy. This one's red in this ad. Okay. Um I almost work. bought one of those. Uh let me see if we have it here. I'm gonna be very upset here, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let me control F or command. I don't F. want to. S- <laughs> we have Amigo. We have Stylus. Amigo twice. <laughs> I was saying, I know we've done the Stylus. Troop or Suzu. Wait, I typed in. Wait, what? Were you thinking the Stylus? Because there was a Stylus RS too. Maybe that. I was think just- I remember I doing the God, Stylus I- RS. I swear to God, we didn't. I thought we did an iMark. I guess you're right. Why do I think we did that before then? Because st- it's, I mean, the stylus is not that far. Not that off. far. It's but... got rebadged. How did they, what was the Geo version? Didn't they like, I didn't they like rebadge like four of them to like the. Yeah, the... but I swear to God, we did the I mark. That's why I didn't say it. Damn it. I'm an idiot. Touche. Good vehicle. I swear to God, we did an I mark, man. <laughs> no. My list is infallible. <laughs> <laughs> Thank it's God in, we started writing these down with our fucking minds, dude. I know, right? Okay, fair enough. That was on me then. I should have fucking I would have said it first, but I thought I thought for sure. Let me see your ad here and see. Um, it, it didn't it didn't put the ampersand on there on the link for some reason. I don't know if that's required. You'll find out when you click on it, but let's see. Oh, it's a picture of a penis. Um, yeah, no, those are sweet. God, I swear to God, we did this. Not this <laughs> ad, but this car. <laughs> Damn it, son. But you got it. Don't worry. Did. How did I you do got that? it either way? Great car. No stylus, but. What year was this? This was. Uh, uh, I think it's like an 89. It okay. Didn't, it explicitly say, but. This is almost the same price as a Sonata. I know. What would you rather have? I mean, obviously this one, but what was the better? Ooh. Like if you had a family car for the same price, that Sonata crushed this thing. That's true. You know what we got to do though. Hold on. I already Uh-oh. clicked out of the ad. We got to call the. We got to call the the number. There's a number on this one. There's my. a number. We got to do it. Where's my phone? Okay. This is for my. free Isuzu brochures. What do you think? Porn or not porn? What do you think it's going to be? Uh, it's porn. It's porn. Okay. Let's 100%. see. Two four five four five four nine. Wait. Have we called this? It's already in my phone. <laughs> I t- right, I'm see. telling you, let's I think see. we did this car. Uh, how did I miss it? I'm going through the list. Okay, okay here we go. Put it on speaker. Let's see. We can Welcome just... to America's hottest talk it's line. Porn. Guys, hot ladies are waiting. It's always to the talk same one. one now. It's always. It's like they went and they bought all of the old. Like one porno consortium just went and purchased all of the all of the phone numbers for in vintage car ads. Why? Maybe we had an Asuzu episode, but I distinctly remember talking about the iMark for like an extended period. I thought for some damn reason we did the quiz show on it. I wonder if it will <sighs> let me will it let me look up the last time I called the, the Isuzu porno number? Let's see. Eight hundred. Uh, oh, two, if you looked on your phone four, history, five. it should show. Uh, December 1st, 2023. So not that long. Go to the list. Okay. <laughs> this is good. Good podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find out. Let's see what it was. Let's see what, what shares the number with that. Uh, is it like the trooper or something? Uh, I don't have the exact, I have the episode numbers, which one posted in December. So well, we would have recorded. Yeah. I would have recorded da, 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 da. So that could have been roughly either 108 or 109. 
Okay, so that's going to be the trooper. Yeah, could be the yeah, season trooper. Yeah, that tracks. That's what it's from. We must have called the trooper and it was porn. I love you. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes yeah. you call the trooper and you get porn. That was a good one, man. That's a uh, often forgotten about car, and that was a good ad. That was a little tricky. Not gonna lie, that was probably a yeah, spicy. yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was a hard. That was a hard eight for sure. It was a hard eight. Took the whole eight and ran with it. You got it though. I totally pushed it out because I thought. I swear to God, we did the IMR. I'm like, he's not asking me again. That's why I said that. <laughs> the first thing I said. Nope. Nope. Damn awesome. it, Azuzu. Damn it, the Swift is a fucking three-cylinder, by the way. I'm an idiot. Oh, fair. In the heat, in the did passion. They make, did they the make moment. a four-cylinder version, or was that only in the the Metro? I think the Swift the four, four banger. The, yeah, the Swift. I think the Swift G. The one three. I was always a, a one liter. Yeah. I thought you get one the three. One three. One I thought you get the one three. That's a four banger. The one three mm-hmm. is a four banger. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Okay, uh, then yeah. I'm not that much of an idiot. You're good. But, uh, yeah. And I was right about the GTI dropping the eye, and I was going in their power. You're like, no. <laughs> Look what I've got. <laughs> and Wrong. No. All right. Well, Incorrect. let's follow that up. Let's follow that up with some actual drug abuse in the form of PCP, Project Car Progress. Uh, Frank, have you done any PCP lately that you, oh, want, you want to talk boy. about today? Not really. Only thing I've done was I found out some, some, local, some local hooligans uh, stole the gas cap off of the 41 Chevy truck. No. Um, which, not that big a deal. It wasn't the original. Okay. Um, it originally oh. had, when I bought it, it had some like aftermarket locking one that I thought looked stupid. Okay. So I got rid of it. In retrospect, probably could have used the lock because <laughs> what I don't that know sucks. is I don't know. Here's what sucks is I don't know when it got stolen. Is that I noticed the, and, it yesterday. Oh, shit. That's like an open, straight up open... And it's been raining, and there's trees there, and it's just like sticks out of the cab like a like a snorkel, waiting to just suck up whatever some local kid decides he wants to drop into it. Oh shit! I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't look like anything's in there, but I don't know. Did you it's take been it out off? in the rain? Did you put something in it? Well, I went and I bought. I turns out the same cap is used from ni- Thank you, GM. Used from 1937 to 1972. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so I just called up the local parts place. I'm like, you have a cap for 72 Chevy? And they're like, uh, yeah, $8. It's tight. So I just went and got one. Nice. Put it on it today. But I I don't, this is why I need fewer cars, God damn it. You need a I don't, I don't. You should run a borescope down in that fuel tank just to take a peek. I should. I don't have one. I could get one. Yeah, they're cheap. I bought a cheapie on Amazon one time and it worked great. Yeah, like if it's only full of rainwater, like, that's Maybe better than tell. yeah, but better than looking at like acorns or sticks or whatever kids drop. You know, what if some kids walking yeah, by start putting rocks cards. in there? Yeah, yeah, that, that might be worth something. You get a I blue would like eyes, white they... dragon, whatever it's called. Exactly. Yeah, I would, yeah, it's just it's just full of crystal meth. Um, <laughs> you know, I'd like to think they're more respectful of that, but I've also got kids hot boxing in the van in the truck, which yeah, for, honestly, get it, kids. Like, You're like I don't care. I hope Do they're work. more honest than that, but they also stole stole the fucking. They've also smoked the truck. <laughs> yeah, well, sure, but like it's easy to walk by and just pick it up and go, "Mine, who, <laughs> look what I have." Yeah, and then, yeah, but you know, dumb kids, like, hey, let's put somebody, who can put the biggest rock in here. Yeah, just like just jerking their meat right into it. Like I don't know, like I don't. I'm gonna look for floaters. I don't know what I'm gonna find in there. So uh-huh. I suppose I, I suppose I should probably do that. I put a new cap on it today, which is yeah. like the lowest bar to clear. Um, as far as getting work done on that thing, seal all those goodies in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Hermetically seal the uh, mm-hmm. whatever toads or whatever they put in there. So, um, yeah. Okay, that's Good not stuff. exactly progress. Frank but bought it, a fuel cap. Let's go. Exactly. <laughs> Let's go. Um, I mean, yeah, otherwise, why? otherwise, I did some preliminary photo work on the little nine twenty four. Mm. Get it sold. I I did a full photo shoot, video shoot on the we LS. To, we have to review get both of those before you sell them, Frank. I swear to God. What are you doing tomorrow? Like, get out here. Uh, you know, I don't know. Work. Um, God damn it. Can we grab when, like a? I don't know. We'll have to figure out a time. This weekend is 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 fucking cooked. Yeah. No. No. Um, I'm I'm not good this weekend. I might have to like take a day. When you okay. are you gonna sell it like this week? Uh, the auction might go live next week. On the LS, anyways. LS is first. I have yeah. Everything else is later. So, yeah. Of if you want to do the LS, yeah, we got some time. We got some okay. time. Um, Maybe do I the LS. 
let's some, maybe take a sense. day next week do the ls or we could do that yeah. weird thing where i come scoop it up and review it and bring it back to you if you want it's fine yeah it's whatever you sure. want yeah yeah that works um it's nice doing a two twofer because then we can like you can camera work and or, or I can drive or I can camera work and you can drive. It makes yeah. the shooting a lot more dynamic. I've, I've I've been like the world's busiest human being and it it ain't getting lighter. But sir, I, sir, I got you beat. I got a I got a month and a half year old. No, and no, I work no, a very just, demanding job. <laughs> no, you just you just you just give a match a book of matches. I literally don't find. I don't sleep. I slept like four hours, three hours last night. Like Let's I sleep. literally, I don't do anything. Yeah. There's, keep, there's, I, there's stories, there's stories here. We, we each have the thousand yard stare. Um, yeah, I promise. So yeah, yeah, so we'll figure that out because I'm, I'm gonna sell the LS. The fire, fire sale season, man, it's around the corner. Hell yeah. Um, Good. I've been doing a little PCP because I'm really, I'm actually in a really to tough to spot watch here. Well, here's the thing, man. I don't. It's hard to carve uh, garage time, but it, it's stuff that needs to get done because we're in the process. Uh, I own a house. My wife owns a house, but we want to move to another town and we need to like consolidate to one Stockton. house, like normal fucking people. Um, uh, no, not Stockton, <laughs> nothing against it. <laughs> God, uh, not going that way. Uh, but we need to, so to sell my property, I need to like, you know, get rid of like six vehicles in a, in a timely manner. And I got to do some work to the house. So I've been like sneaking away to do little gar garage projects. So the, the annex I've been talking about for a while, I actually just restored the whole interior and by restored, I mean, just really freshened up. Uh, the shift yep. boot was ripped, you know, ship like shit like that. Finding a shift boot that actually fits is the challenge on these older unique cars, right? Cause they don't make an NX 2000 shift boot anymore. Uh, oh, and you're not going to find one at Nissan. So I replaced that and that's always taking some of the dash apart, replacing all the little, you know, things that hold it down and making it look good. Right. You, sometimes you buy that one that's so tight. When you go in and reverse, it rips the shift boot out of the damn plastic. Yeah. You know how it goes. Anyway, big addition there. I fixed a crack in the dash, which is always fun to do. Uh, and then steam cleaned all the uh, the gnarly sauce out of the seats. You know, 30-year-old car. I've had this car for like five years and never cleaned it, never did anything with it. Yeah. So it was just a full, uh, big-time interior clean. And uh, love the way it comes out, man. Seats came out good. The interior is pretty solid overall in yeah. that car. It's, it's not a concourse car, but just... You know, doing that little bit of stuff like vacuum in the carpets. And dude, the weirdest thing, man, Nissan early 90s, like my 300 ZX twin turbo, the carpet is super deep pile from Nissan. Mm -hmm. So it's like really gourmet shit. And I'm like, think, Why yeah, think of what it can absorb. Yeah, it's like really good quality. And they had mats down. I have the original NX mats that are fucking tattered to shit, good. but I still have them, which is cool. But yeah, just, you know, spruced up the interior. It looks pretty sharp in there, man. Like it's, it doesn't stink. The car had a horrible musty smell to it. Uh, I think there was a smoke. <laughs> All those Peter North stains, yeah. Yeah, Peter North and uh, just- Holly North? I don't even know. How many Norths are there? Big Pete himself. Uh, right. Big Peter North and Pole. another Big Peter. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that was it. That was my PCP, just doing some really involved stuff. The crack- the crack filling, you know, that takes time. You got to let it dry, cure up, and I matched the paint as best I could. So cool shit, man. I can't wait to get this Hell car yeah. wrapped up. I can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. You know what I can't wait for? Oh. Another rising episode of another pointless automotive podcast. Yeah. You Thank guys, you for tuning in. You guys made it through a whole uh, nearly hour plus episode here. Um, mm -hmm. And we thank you for stopping by. Uh, obviously, check us out wherever you listen to your podcast. Another Pointless Automotive Podcast, APA Podcast for those in the know. Uh, you can check us out on YouTube too for the visual aspect of it. Yeah. You want to see our smiling faces, our shitty projects that almost never move on Frank's account uh, mm -hmm. in the background there. Um, but definitely do that and you know, give us a review on the old podcast. Give us a good old rating. And if you swing by YouTube, subscribe. It's free. Write some cool comments. Uh, yeah. Talk about how Always we don't know shit, shit about cars because that's true too. Look at the shit we also own. Also true. Yeah. I mean, you can't get any more factual than that. But Frank, your personal endeavors, your world class mm. photography. Where can the good folks stop oh, by and see God. that? Yeah, it's it's not a good world, but if you want to check out the uh, the underworld, uh, the the CD underbelly of what I'm up to and and stock you digitally, you can do that. That's at the photographer's garage on most of the things. Um, keep tuning in here because this Please is do. where you should really be be paying attention um, or struggling to ignore. Um, yeah. Chadwick, how about you? Yeah, Auto Obsessive Garage. You guys know what it's about. Those rescues, yeah. restorations, and reviews. All the R's oh. you ever needed. Uh, exactly. Pirate levels of R's. <laughs> we'll just leave it there. No hard That's R's, it. I assure you. Um, no. <laughs> no, no, no. 
<laughs> no, he Have stopped doing that, that months yet? ago. Are we? No. <laughs> We're not that casual. Um, but uh, yeah, guys, just uh, awesome seeing you. Having you stop by and listen to the boys chat about cars, and we will Thank catch you, you. Let's say in a week. We'll catch you in a week. Yeah, give or take. Maybe we we should like sprinkle in a random one. We've had like the one week cadence on Wednesdays. Yeah, always. Maybe always. we'll mix it up. We'll do the Patreon thing. I, pa- Patreon? Patreon? <laughs> Patreon. That's like a weird like drug in like 2037. Um, <laughs> Patron, he said. <laughs> Patron, Jankum, do all of those. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Love you. As always, take care. Peace. Goodbye.